It's time to install our return jet on the pond, and I want to show you this really cool specialty fitting that I have here. This is our TPR jet, and the fact that it has that nice cut angle will allow me to install it perfectly flush on the wall like this. Of course, it's going to be below the bond beam, and uh, it gives us an angle, and it's going to be able to push water in the direction that we want, so surface debris can go towards the, the skimmer. Now, this is a versatile jet. It can go left or right. You just got to spin it around like so. Now, once we get it in position, uh, the, the liner will come up across this. We would have a sealant on this, this area right here. And then we would take this flange piece, install it over here, and then we can have some screws and we can mechanically attach this unit so it keeps the liner in place for a watertight seal. I do want to show you a different jet. This is a, a straight jet, or it can be called a gap return as well. For example, if you have a, a pond, larger pond than this, with dual bottom drains, you're going to have a gap between the two bottom drains, and this can be installed low in the pond, and any sediment that might land between the two bottom drains can be pushed and influenced to go one direction or the other. Or this is also a good application if you have a, a square pond, and you have flat walls, and you just want to push water this way and push water that way, you might install a couple of these uh, straight jets right here. Cool thing about this straight jet, it does have some threads on the interior, so it allows you to potentially put an eductor on there, which is specialty fitting to allow water to be shot at a, a more rapid speed. And you could also thread in an elbow or, you know, uh, to get the water to flow in a little direction. So this is a pretty versatile piece. Now, if you're doing a, a larger pond that maybe has some, some different inlets and different shapes around the outside that maybe potentially has a, an area where the water's not going to flow as well, then you can install multiple jets, maybe a jet here, a jet there, and you can influence water whichever direction you want to go. So this is a great tool to have on, on your pond. Now, we are going to have a, a valve back at the life support station so we can control the flow rates to, the, to our jet. So we can, you know, maybe we're doing maintenance, turn the jet on full blast and push water around in a pattern. Or if we want our waterfall to be more dynamic for a party, we could turn the jet off and then send all the water to the waterfall. So good, uh, good fitting to have on there. Now we're going to go ahead and get this installed in the wall. I'll show you a couple of tricks as we install it, and I'll show you how we'll secure it inside the wall. So since my pipe has this angle and my, my uh, line is coming in at a direct shot, I'm going to go ahead and install an elbow on here so I can have a good angle to get right back towards my plumbing. And then from here, back this way, since I'm coming under the coping here, uh, under the bond beam, I have a little angle. I'm gonna go ahead and use some, some PVC flex pipe to make that attachment. Now, I don't have a problem putting this angle on here. A lot of, oftentimes, you know, you, you wanna limit how many fittings you put on your, on your plumbing lines because you don't wanna restrict the flow rates. But on a jet like this, we're not gonna be running a lot of flow through there. And so we, we can add an elbow and not worry about restricting our flow. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this thing together. All right, I want to show you this little trick we're going to do to make the installation really clean and easy. I have about a three or four foot piece of PVC flex pipe, and I'm going to glue it to this fitting, let it harden off there. And then what that does is it gives me the ability to, to stick this pipe through the wall and have some flexibility as it comes up through there. And because uh, there's a, a pretty good little curve in there. Once I get it through the wall, then I'll have the ability to pull it down and connect it to the, the hard pipe that I have stubbed out for the line over there. Now, once I get it in the wall, because it's flexible pipe, it'll be a little loosey-goosey like this. But what we'll do is we'll mix up a little concrete and we'll pour a little collar around this, let it harden off, and then that way it won't be moving in the wall once it's installed. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this up, let it harden off, and we'll push it through. Give it that little twist. Okay, that's good. So see how it, it's kind of loose and wants to do what it wants to do? 
So we'll mix up some concrete and let it harden off so it doesn't bounce like that. Hold on. Okay. So we need to let that harden off. So now it still moves a little bit, but that's not so bad. I can put a stake and hold it where I want it to, and then the concrete hardens off, then that won't be moving at all anymore. I won't have to worry about it putting pressure on the liner. So this flex pipe gives me the ability to tie into this TPR line real easy now. So I'm gonna just make a cut here, and then I'll put this coupler on, and I'll cut this pipe and just put it right together. It's real simple. Okay, so it lines up nice. I'm gonna take off a little bit of this right here just to make my transition a little smoother. Hit that, please. Yeah, just take off that knot. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, that'll be good. Okay. Nice, nice and easy. Okay, now I just have to let that concrete harden off. I think I can go ahead and move on to the next, next task on the pond.